Hello science students. We're gonna move past balancing chemical reactions and start talking about intermolecular forces. And we're really gonna focus on water for this because water's intermolecular forces are the ones that we deal with the most. And the, the key here to keep in mind is this, this is not going to cover all the intermolecular forces that there are, but it is gonna kind of talk about the ones that we're gonna see a lot with water. So your goal is to be able to explain how water molecules interact with other molecules. That actually includes other water molecules as well, but we'll talk about that in a minute. The definition of intermolecular forces, the nice thing is this word has all the parts in it that you need to understand. It. Inter means between, molecular just means molecules, so between molecules forces. Interactions or forces that occur between molecules. So again, that intermolecular forces, that's how water interacts with other molecules. And just as a quick example, something like a solid there's really strong intermolecular forces there, so strong that the atoms are being held in place. They're still moving a little bit, but they're being held in place for the most part. In a liquid, usually the intermolecular forces aren't quite as strong because the molecules can kind of freely move, but they're still stuck in kind of that same volume. A gas, usually the intermolecular force is pretty weak because the molecules are really far apart and uh, they aren't being held together very well, right? They're just bouncing off each other. There really are, aren't much in the way of intermolecular forces going on there besides them pushing on each other when they get really close and that's it. So kind of a quick example there to help you with understanding intermolecular forces, strong intermolec intermolecular forces, generally weak ones in the gas. Let's talk a little bit about water. So water is a polar molecule. So we need to explain what that means. So there's something that's called electronegativity. This is a really big deal in chemistry and helps explain why some atoms and elements behave the way they do. This is the tendency of an element to hold onto electrons. So basically you could, a lot of times we'll talk about is the, uh, an element that's really electronegative will hog electrons that hold onto them. So in a covalent bond, they're supposed to share the electrons equally. In reality, that's not the way it happens. The, elements that are more electronegative will have the electrons more often than they should. And if something has electrons more often than they should, they have a little negative charge, which is why we're gonna put a little negative charge next to the, the oxygen, because it is more electronegative than hydrogen. And the hydrogens just have tiny little positive charges. So that is not a full positive charge, it is not a full negative charge. It just means their hydrogen's a little bit positive, oxygen's a little bit negative. So water is a polar molecule, because oxygen, and we're just gonna add that in, water is polar because oxygen is much more electronegative than hydrogen. And we're gonna look at the trend on the periodic table for that. The trend on the periodic table, and I would strongly encourage you to go find your periodic table and add this in there, is that as you go up the periodic table, more electronegative. And that's because there are fewer electrons around the nucleus. That means the protons are closer to the outside. So they're, they're much more electronegative as you move up the periodic table. So you might think hydrogen's more electronegative, but electronegativity increases across the table. And the reason for that is elements like oxygen and fluorine, if they can fill their octet, then they're stable. So they're very attractive to electrons. They tend to pull them in to make themselves more stable. So they tend to be more electronegative. So electro electronegativity increases up the table and to the right across the table. Uh, we can kind of ignore the noble gases on this just because they're kind of have full octets anyway. If you remove electrons from them, they're going to definitely get electrons back pretty quickly. But uh, electronegativity up and across, which is why oxygen is, since it's much further to the right on the table than hydrogen, it's much more electronegative. And when they're combined in water, the oxygen's a little bit negative, the hydrogen's a little bit positive because the oxygen is sort of hanging on to the electrons a little bit more strongly than the hydrogen is. Let's talk about what this means for water. So water has two big properties we're gonna talk about today. One of them is cohesion. Uh, you've definitely experienced this or seen this before. So cohesion is water molecules tend to stick to themselves. Because they have those positive and negative charges, they tend to stick to themselves. Here's a little diagram. So it's a little hard to see, but the little dashed lines, those are something called hydrogen bonds. That's where the negative oxygen, slightly negative oxygen is close to the slightly positive hydrogen. That pulls the water together and makes them stick to each other really, really well. Uh, one thing you've probably noticed before is that water tends to be hard to separate. They tend to stick together in droplets and move together versus you know falling apart. 
Uh, one thing that you've also seen in class is that when we tried to boil water or unfreeze water or melt water, uh, it takes a lot of energy and that's because the water molecules are stuck together really well. So our example of this is surface tension. You've probably noticed this as well. The top of water, the water molecules are sticking to each other so strongly, it takes a little bit of force to break through that. So some things can float on top of water without breaking that surface tension. Hopefully you get to see some of that later on. Second property is something called adhesion. So instead of cohesion, where it's co or together, just water molecules sticking to each other, it's adhesion, it's adhering to something else. So this is when water molecules will stick to other surfaces, something besides water. Uh, something that's really common is if I take a piece of paper and dip it in water, the water will climb up that paper, it'll spread out throughout the paper. It won't just stay put because it's adhering and sort of pulling itself through that paper. You've maybe experienced this when you're cleaning up a mess or if you've ever done some sort of chromatography thing in uh, science where the water kind of moves up the paper, you've seen that there as well. So here's the key. You gotta be able to tell the difference between cohesion and adhesion. Cohesion is when water sticks to itself. So that results in things like surface tension, okay? Adhesion is when water clings to other surfaces like going up paper, um, something like capillary action in plants where the water moves up the xylem in the plant uh, that allows the water to flow up through the, the trunk and into the rest of the plant or the stem uh, that's, uh, that's part of that adhesion of water molecules. Okay, thank you guys for listening. And this is our intro to intermolecular forces and there's more to come. Have a good rest of your day.